once it was described as the rarest bat in the world. One of the biggest challenges at the beginning, people really didn't like them. For them, they, they think that the, the bat is a threat. That's the main issue, to make people really care for them. I like the bats especially because they are like, wow, they're very beautiful when you see them in the wild. When you arrive in their roost, you see that you have a big tree and all of them hanging. Just imagine a Christmas tree with all the bats hanging around. You know, they are really beautiful. My name is Stephen Kiyosakai. I come from Roderick Island. I've been working with the Roderick's fruit bat around 16 years. In English, we call it the flying fox. They are good pollinators, so they will go from tree to tree, like the bees. They are seed, good seed dispersal, because that's why um, when we go in the wild around Roderick, we see like huge endemic trees around waterfalls. We can understand it was from bats, you know, and when they eat it, they will uh, propagate it. They are re recreating the forest, so it's really, really important for us to save our bats. Roderick was really destroyed. So we've lost our primary forest. During the 70s, the population was really uh, low. It was like uh, less than 70. It was described as the rarest bat in the world. The main threat uh, for our fruit bat is uh, climate change. Uh, we have huge cyclone. It's like now in Roderick, it's like dry. And uh, if we don't, they don't have fruits, it will be really bad for them. And uh, that's why the aim is to have more forests, to restore more forests, and to recreate their habitat, to save them from extinction. When Moaf arrived in Roderick, that's what we, the main issue was to re recreate the natural forest, the habitat, and then we had the help of Chester Zoo. This is something that Chester Zoo have been supporting for decades now. We work in four nature reserves, so we are planting some more uh, native plants so for them to have their food. One of the biggest challenges, like at, at the beginning, people really didn't like them. For them, they think that the, the bat is a threat. We go around villages giving talk to, to people uh, to sensitize them and to know the importance of our fruit bats. And um, even going uh, in school also, giving talks, yes, to, to kids and organizing events also all around the bats. We try to make them understand the importance of the fruit bat because doing conservation work is not just us, but we have to uh, bring the people with us to, to do the job. It's a big challenge, it's really a big challenge, but now they care for the bat. We have a number of students who are conducting scientific research on the population data that's being collected by the teams here. So with this collaborative approach between academics, zoos and NGOs, we're getting an amazing set of information and data about this species. Every November we do like a huge bat count, so that's why we have volunteers also coming, like uh, students and then people in the neighbourhood. Conducting an island-wide bat count like this allows us to estimate an entire population size, so that's a really useful conservation tool. For one week we go around uh, the roost, around the island, and then we have a number. Last bat count, last year, last November, it was around 25,000 and um, they are re recreating the forest. Maybe uh, next November we'll have more, we think. <laughs>